he is, the one, the only... <laughs> All right, George, let's get down to business. What's the secret word tonight? Well, let's have the duck come down. Okay, here's the word right here. And Groucho will talk to our first couple in... Well, Groucho, Elizabeth Howell and Tony Felice are waiting to talk to you. Support you in place and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. <laughs> Tony Police and Elizabeth Howell, huh? Lizzie, let's start. Uh, you don't mind if I call you Lizzie? I like it. All, right. All my friends call me Lizzie. Okay. Let's start with you. Now, uh, where are you from, Lizzie? Uh, well, from originally from Swansea in South Wales. South Wales, huh? Did you ever meet a fellow named Jonah? And the world? Yeah, he lived in Wales for a while. <laughs> Before my time. He lived in the middle part, I think. How long did you stick around Swansea? Not very long. Because my father was a rear admiral in the Royal Navy, so he dragged us around the world. A rear admiral? You mean you never saw his face? <laughs> Sometimes. Well, didn't he, was he always in the rear? Didn't he ever see any action? Yes, before he became an admiral. He did, huh? Mm -hmm. Five star? Yes. That's the best kind, you know, yes. especially with brandy. Now, what is, <laughs> how did your father get to be an admiral? Did he polish up the handle of the old front door? Oh, you, you know Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah, do you know Gilbert and Sullivan? Very well. You do, huh? Uh, on, on April 29th on NBC, I'm going to do Coco in the Mikado. We're going to do the Mikado on the Bell Telephone Hour, oh, I... and I hope you're going to listen to it, huh? And buy some telephones, too, huh? <laughs> Get some extensions or do something to it. <laughs> now, you say you've lived all over the world, huh? Yes. Uh, has this been an advantage? I mean, did you learn anything by moving around all the time? Well, I learned 18 languages. You speak 18 languages? I speak 18 languages. Let, uh, do you want to know you? what they yeah, are? Yeah, I guess I'd like to know what they are. Uh, I speak English. English. You French, do? Yes. French, German, Italian, Malay, Turkish, modern Greek, Arabic, Farsi, which is the language of Persia, Hindustani, Mandarin, and six spoken Chinese dialects, and uh, some wow. other out-of-the-way ones at Wadi Kanar and places like that. Oh, that's magnificent. You really have a flair for uh, languages, don't you? Could you say something to me and uh, let's... Uh, did you say Malayan? I said Malayan, no. yes. Could you say... Uh, um, well, say, sir, I don't care. Say, say anything you want. Say, to you? say I'm a handsome man. Check up Malayu. That means I'm a handsome man? Wait a minute, I haven't finished. It takes a long time. To be Check a handsome man, yes, it does. <laughs> it takes many years. Now, what'd you say? I said, I love the smell of that cigar. <laughs> you really do, huh? Yes. I thought you were declaring war on Afghanistan. <laughs> well, if you like the smell of a cigar, here, have a cigar. <laughs> uh, can you open it for me? Yeah, I, I can open it. break my fingernails. Yeah, well, it's not easy to open these. You really need jacks or better. Well, you bite the end off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a different one. Oh, this I thing is all right. This is already fixed. Can you give me a light? Yeah, I sure will. <laughs> They're not very strong, are they? No. You know, if I'd known you were going to smoke it, I'd have given you a cheap one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's too late now. That, uh, you, you think I'm kidding? That's a genuine 10-cent cigar, I guess. It tastes like it, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this a habit that you picked up in Hong Kong or someplace? Well, I'll oh, say this. This is a Havana cigar. This is a very good cigar. Yes, I'm so only pulling your leg. Well, it really well pull the other one, will you? <laughs> it's a very good cigar. It's as good as my father used to smoke, and I used to steal them when I was three. Yeah, you know, there used to be an old joke you said about pulling your leg. It, it, you know, this old woman, she's around 60, and she says, I'm afraid I'm going to wind up an old maid. And I said, well, bring her in, and we'll wind her up together. <laughs> this was during the war years when everything was hard to get. <laughs> Now, how does your husband feel about your smoking these strong stinkers? Well, my husband's dead. I'm a widow, so I can do well, just I'm, as I'm I like. I'm sorry to hear that. Now then, let's get on to you. Your name is Richard Lovelace? Where are you from? From Tony Ferrell. This keeps up. We're going to have to put English subtitles at the bottom of our pictures. 
Now, give me that. Where did you say you were from? Ponta Mica, Zara, Dalmatia. How long have you been in this country, Tony? About 43 years, Groucho. 43 years. That's a long time. I bet it seems like yesterday. <laughs> seems to me like a 43 years. <laughs> Every once in a while, you get one of these nights, you know. <laughs> well, it seems like yesterday to me. You speak any other language besides Arabic? Yes, I do. And I do English? Speak. I speak about eight besides English. You speak eight languages? Yes, sir. What, what are they? I speak Italian, Polish, Russian, Czechoslovak, Bohemian, Spanish, and Portuguese. Well, which one have you been speaking so far? <laughs> With my own. I'll tell you what we do, Tony. If, if I don't dig you, I'll ask you to answer in Italian or Portuguese or Russian. And then Elizabeth here can translate it, okay? Sure. All right. Uh, uh, now, now, what kind of work do you do, Tony? I'm a sewer. No, no, I want you to answer me in, in one of these other languages. You fetch a massage in Hotel Ambassador. He's a masseur at the Ambassador Hotel. You work in a sewer at the ambassador? <laughs> well, who, uh, who have you flogged so far on your workbench? Anybody of, uh, of importance? Well, I suppose to massage Khrushchev. Khrushchev? Yes, but he never showed up. You know why he didn't show up, don't you? He was lost on the freeway. He was trying to sneak down to Disneyland. <laughs> well, Liz, uh, let's get back to you. I imagine you've had a fairly checkered career. Uh, living in all these countries. What sort of work have you done? Well, in Australia, I was an interpreter for the immigration department. Don't they call it Australia over there? Yes, if you're an Australian. Oh. Uh, and then I worked in a military hospital as a psychotherapist in the psychiatric ward. I worked for the, the BBC Far Eastern program. I was head of the research department for Reuters Press Agency. I have a Master of Arts degree of Cambridge University and a PhD of London University, too. And then I came to America. Well, what are we doing? There's no point in us doing the quiz. Uh, we'll skip that and I'll just give you the money. <laughs> I'm going to be embarrassed just asking the questions. Now, what are you doing in this country, Liz? Are you teaching at some university? In this country, I am a cook housekeeper. I should think with your background that you would be in some intellectual field. Well, in America I found, in the only country of all the 18 countries I've lived in, that if you're a woman and you're over 35, the kindest thing that anybody can do to you if you're looking for, for a job is to put you up against the wall and shoot you. Well, to begin with, there's no woman that's going to admit she's over 35, is there? Well, I can't do well. Look at my hair and my wrinkles. Well, I'm you look like 30 36. 36. <laughs> You're a perfect 36. Thank you. Now, are you satisfied with being a housekeeper, or would you rather get something more in keeping with your education well, and experience? Well, I'm not going to let the Yankees lick me. Well, I'm we've going done that two or three times. <laughs> Wait, forget about that. That's not in our history books. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to stay here till I get the job I want, and I'm going to get it. I've got wonderful friends. I like the Americans, and what's much more important, the Americans like me. Well, there's no reason why they shouldn't. You're a very attractive woman. Thank you. I can't help but admire your spirit, too, Elizabeth. If, uh, so? It was pioneer women like you in this country who went around wrecking all the saloons 25 years ago. <laughs> You're a most unusual person there, Elizabeth, and I'm interested in your opinion. For example, what do you think of our American women as compared to those you've known in other countries? American women? But there aren't any women in America. They're all girls, even when they're 90. <laughs> That's true. They die hard over here. <laughs> and they pinch their waist? Yes. How about American men? Uh, how do you feel about the American Well, how do men? I feel? I'm... No, what is your analysis, let's say? No, well, how I, can I tell you how I feel about American men? No. I think they're all sweeties, but... Ameri and suckers? Yes, and suckers. Um, <laughs> they all work hard to clothe these girls, 
And then when they're 50 and could really enjoy life, they suddenly drop dead. Mm. And they leave all these rich widows to go on these cru cruises. <laughs> put American dollars in British pockets. Well, it's certainly true that men don't live as long as women, but there's a good reason for it, too. Mm -hmm. Look what men have to battle all their life. The toughest enemy in the world, women. <laughs> well, I don't think that the American women are the toughest en enemy. I think the American children are. I think you're awfully cruel to your children. Cruel to them in what way? Because you won't let them be young. An American child is a little adult by the time they're four years of age, and they're dating when they're 12, what have they got to look forward to when they're 20? Not in my family, they don't. I have a daughter almost 14, and she doesn't go out with well, boys. I'm glad to hear it. Except maybe if there's a big party or something, but there's nothing like, <laughs> no going well, steady in my house. But she's very sensible. <laughs> and if I could get that lousy TV set out of our room. <laughs> That's where you must learn to say no. Well, I do. I keep walking in there and shutting it off, and she turns it on again. But I do have to watch Huckleberry Hound with her. She insists on it. <laughs> I like those intellectual shows. I'm sure you do. Well, you're uh, unusual and charming, too, sir, and, and you have a great gift of gab, uh, Tony. I want to <laughs> congratulate you. I'd like to continue this, but we've got to get down to the main business, which is uh, winning some money. So let's play You Bet Your Life. Uh, George, would you bring out the questions? What category have they chosen? Uh, famous lovers of fact and fiction, right? Well, you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, famous lovers, huh? Elizabeth, why don't you pick the first one? Yes. Um, and your first one is for uh, $200. $200, okay. Uh, for $200 in Wagner's opera, whom does a soldier love? Tristan. Tristan is right. Yeah. And you're on your way with uh, $200 and three more chances to make five. Yeah. Yeah. You Can be... I look? No, no, you can't look at no. that. The answers are on there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've really been around, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've been reading your books. <laughs> what books? Did you read my last book? I read your last book. I'm still reading it, and I fall out of bed every night with laughing. No. Well, that's one way of getting out of bed. Huh? <laughs> you hear that? You read Groucho and me, and you love it. Now, for three hundred dollars, and I wrote it. In the Taming of the Shrew, <laughs> who was the Shrew won by Petruchio? Petruchio. Catherine. Cat Catarina is right. Catherine. Yeah. Well, you already have five hundred dollars, so uh, you're right, assured of coming back for a chance at ten. Yes, this is all. Yes, and you have nothing to lose now, really, except the money. But uh, I mean, you'll be back. You What's know. money? Yes. For three hundred dollars in Gilbert and Sullivan's Mikado, whom mm. does Nanky Poo love? Oh. No. Wandering minstrel eyes. Oh, it's here, and I can't say it. Well, try. Uh, you ought to no. know. Here, read it. Oh, mm. what an idiot I am. Yum, yum. yum, yum. Isn't that a lovely name for a young girl? <laughs> well, you have one more chance. Uh, That's what I call my daughter when she's not around. Go for 200 this time. My little daughter. I have two daughters. What was the name of Robin Hood's lady love? Oh, I know, do you? No. Maid Marion. That's right. And That's you right. wind up with $700, so we'll see you a little later on in the show. <laughs> no, you're smoking. I've got to remember last week um, when our guests were uh, Charles Colacci and Sarita Heredia, and we ran out of time, and you asked them to come back and uh, perform this week because we found out that she was a very good flamenco dancer and singer. Well, they're here again, and uh, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome again to You Bet Your Life. Uh, Mr. Kalachi? Alegria. Yes, sir. Uh, we had quite a conversation last week. You certainly have. I'm glad you were able to come back again to play the game. And, uh, Sarita, uh, what are you going to do for us? I'm going to do a rumba gitana like the gypsies do, only in the caves of Granada. You know. Okay? Well, I don't know. This is rather inflammable. <laughs> <laughs> May I have a chair, please? You want a, you want a chair? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. 
got everything moving there. Huh? by a Spanish dress. Oh. That was wonderful. That was a, oh, I don't see how you do all those different things at the same time. Well, you had everything moving there for a minute. <laughs> so let's play the game. George, let's have the questions. George, you explain how they play the game. Uh, you selected uh, general information as your mm -hmm. category, right? A great man, too, general information. I knew him well. <laughs> and of course, you, you have four chances to make $500. We start with a two hundred dollar question. For two hundred dollars, how often is the regular U.S. census taken? Good heavens! Mm -hmm. Say it again. I don't think that's right. Um, well, you don't seem to know. Why don't you take her advice? I think I'm more right in my error than okay, she is in her mistake. Uh, I, 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 shall I take yours? And mine? Well, years. six years. And what did you say? One. I said every year. No, well, you're both wrong. It happens to be every ten years. Oh. Okay. Well, you have uh, three more chances to make five hundred dollars. Three chances. Well, you feel good about it, anyhow. You were both wrong. Well, I'm all steamed up here. Um, <coughs> another two hundred. I'm kind of hot myself. <laughs> another two hundred. <laughs> do they all dance like that in Spain? Wild is that? Maybe. Did you see that, George? I did. Yes. yes. Didn't it do anything to you? It oh, you did, did a good flamenco there yourself, you know, Gracho. Maybe I won't know how to answer the question, but I can oh. tell you when a good dancer comes on. Oh, it's nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, for 200 smackolas, that's, uh, you know what that is. Huh? Smackolas? Yeah. Dinero. Parne. Yeah. <laughs> how many sides does a pentagon have? Go ahead. Tell them. No? Five. Five is right. Well, and two more chances to make five hundred dollars. Yes, you now have two hundred. For two hundred dollars, on what Italian island is the famous Blue Grotto located? The Blue Grotto. I always thought that was a drive-in. It turns out to be a Italian island. An Italian island. 
the Blue Grotto. Everybody knows it, except me and these two people. Capri? Capri is right. And you have $400? Yeah. Yeah. The trick is you, to get five, you know. She's very this modest. We'll give you five. No, well, I think she's very shrewd. Oh! I think she's doing this, uh, Intelligent, <clears throat> some Mr. sense, some business sense. For $100, what is another name for a bicycle built for two? Um. Two people riding on a bicycle. What is the name for it? No, no, no. Good heavens, you know. Yeah, well, this happens frequently, you know. Two people on a bicycle. It sounds... A bicycle built for two. It doesn't necessarily have to have two people on it, but two people could be on it. Oh, dear. Can't think of that word now. Mm. Oh. Well, it's, it's a tandem. Oh, yeah. 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 Is that it? That's it. The last That's chance. Yeah. Last well, I'm chance. sorry you didn't win the, enough to get to the big money, but... Gracias, Mr. Gracias. Si, Gracias. Si, si, senorita. Hasta la próxima. Hasta la vista. Okay. 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 I have the faintest you. idea what I'm saying. So, in just a minute, our first couple will be back to spin the wheel for a chance at ten. Big question. Who's going to try for the money? Uh, Elizabeth Howell and Tony Felice earn $700, so they get an opportunity to try for two, five, or $10,000. Right back in there. Pick a number from one to ten. I think I'll have five. Give her a five, George. And you, Tony? I pick three. Three. All right. Now, if either of these numbers comes up, this question is worth five or $10,000. If neither number comes up, uh, and you get the answer, you win a total of $2,000. One of you spin the wheel. Shall I do it, or would no, you I like? You're much stronger no, than I am. Oh. It has nothing to do with strength. Nothing to do with no. strength. Or skill. Well, it was close. You took five and three, and it came up six. So here we go for a total of 2000 You ready? Mm-hmm. Since it became the headquarters of the nationalist Chinese government, Formosa has taken an important place in world geography. For a total of 2,000, what is the capital city of Formosa? You can talk it over. What's the answer? Taipei. Taipei is right. Tai George, bring out two thousand dollars. <laughs> Don't give it to us in dimes, will you? No, no, we're going to give it to you in pennies. <laughs> <laughs> you want a total of two thousand dollars, and uh, what are you going to do with that money? Well, you, Tony. Well, I was planning to go see my mother in Europe next summer. Oh, well, that's a very nice way to spend it. And what are you going to do with yours? I'm going to put up my shingle, and I'm going to work as a psychotherapist. Oh, that's Which good. is my I profession. I thought you were going to... <laughs> now, congratulations, and thanks for being thank with us. Thank you very us. much. Okay, thank you, Tony. Thank you, <laughs>
one, the only... All right, George, let's get down to business. What's the secret word tonight? Well, let's have the duck come down. Okay, here's the word right here. And Groucho will talk to our first couple in... Well, Groucho, Elizabeth Howell and Tony Felice are waiting to talk to you. Support you in place and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. <laughs> Tony Police and Elizabeth Howell, huh? Lizzie, let's start. Uh, you don't mind if I call you Lizzie? I like it. All, right. All my friends call me Lizzie. Okay. Let's start with you. Now, uh, where are you from, Lizzie? Uh, well, from originally from Swansea in South Wales. South Wales, huh? Did you ever meet a fellow named Jonah? And the world? Yeah, he lived in Wales for a while. <laughs> Before my time. He lived in the middle part, I think. <laughs> How long did you stick around Swansea? Not very long. Because my father was a rear admiral in the Royal Navy, so he dragged us around the world. A rear admiral? You mean you never saw his face? <laughs> Sometimes. Well, didn't he, was he always in the rear? Didn't he ever see any action? Yes, before he became an admiral. He did, huh? Hmm? Five star? Yes. That's the best kind, you know, yes. especially with brandy. Now, what is, <laughs> how did your father get to be an admiral? Did he polish up the handle of the old front door? You don't know Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah, do you know Gilbert and Sullivan? Very well. You do, huh? Uh, on, on April 29th on NBC, I'm going to do Coco and the Mikado. We're going to do the Mikado on the Bell Telephone Hour, oh, and I hope you're going to listen to it, huh? And buy some telephones, too, huh? <laughs> Get some extensions or do something to it. <laughs> now, you say you've lived all over the world, huh? Yes. Uh, has this been an advantage? I mean, did you...